welcome to the Casual Birder podcast. I'm Susie Buttress. As a casual birder, I take pleasure in watching the wild birds around me, wherever I am. In my show, I share the joy of birding. I tell you about the birds I've seen, speak with experts and enthusiasts, go on bird outings, and I share stories from birders around the world. In case you missed it, last episode I sat down with my birding partner and husband, John, to review an afternoon birding in Hampshire, which included a couple of life ticks. Do take a listen. If you'd like to support the show's production, you can buy me a virtual coffee at ko-fi.com. My thanks to everyone who supported the show in this way, and special thanks to Stuart, who contributed to the show's tip jar after the last episode. You can find the links for this in the episode notes. You can also support the show by speaking about it on social media, or leaving a review, and this goes a long way in encouraging others to try out the show. Please remember to tag me in your posts so that I can share them. Global Bird Fair back in July provided opportunities to meet in person with some of the long-time listeners and supporters of my podcast. I was especially delighted to finally meet Boris Belchev, a birder from Lithuania who runs Alcedo Wildlife Tours. Boris has been part of the show's Facebook group for quite a while, and has contributed photographs for my What Bird Wednesday picture quizzes. He's also been a steadfast supporter of the show. Boris is passionate about sharing his love of birds and wildlife to educate and inspire others, and he founded his tour company in Lithuania to do just that. From photographing white-tailed eagles from hides to multi-day curated birding trips for target species, Boris's company provides it all. Boris had a stand at Global Bird Fair for his company, and also gave a talk about the birds that can be found in Lithuania, which I attended, and I learned about the wonderful species the country has to offer birders. I was so happy to find that Boris is as lovely in person as he is online. It's been so wonderful to meet you here at Bird Fair. What have been your experiences of being here? Oh, it's very exciting. When I hear the news that uh, Bird Fair will not happen ever again, it was just heartbreaking. <laughs> and when we, we all hear this good news from Tim Appleton that uh, he's willing to continue on new location, my heart was smiling. <laughs> And it's very exciting meeting so much people interested in birding. And it's always a pleasure speaking uh, with people that are passionate as much as I do bird watching. And now that I have uh, my own stand this year, it's really something special. I have been two more times before that, but it was just as a guest on somebody else's stand yeah, and it's much more exciting to, to be owner of your own stand and uh, meet some friends and make new friendships make some networking this is the most important You also gave a talk yesterday about the birds of Lithuania which I came along to there was a few technical difficulties my heart went out to you for it because it's quite hard to, to give a talk anyway and then to have that yeah the talk was really <laughs> a very big challenge for me because I was expecting that somebody will come and, and listen maybe only my family but when I saw the <laughs> whole full of uh, people interested in, in my talk it was uh, really difficult when this uh, technical thing happened but <laughs> I think it went quite well. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what the birding's like in Lithuania and what kind of birds we might see? Yeah, Lithuania, it's a really compact country and in five days, actually, you can go to the main uh, hotspots for birding. One of the most uh, exciting species that I can point out as highlights, it's, of course, aquatic warbler and uh, Asian migrants like... Uh, Greenish warbler, bliffs uh, red warbler and common rose finch are very abundant in our area. And also because it's a uh, river delta, 
We have a lot of waterfowl and the uh, last few years we were getting every year uh, pectoral sandpipers as a vagrant. And this year was really crazy <laughs> because we have this uh, late spring. But then we suddenly get southern species like black shoulder kite and Asian spoonbill and like four avocets, which is highlight for myself, but maybe not so interesting for our guests. But it's always nice to see, for example, black stork and osprey. Yeah, it's quite exciting. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your company and what you um, what you provide? It's a really small company. Until like three, four years ago, it was just me, <laughs> actually. And now, because my girlfriend Vita is uh, helping me, I can say that we have another member of the team and my colleague Monica, which is our uh, logistics specialist. She is arranging all the accommodations because she has these guest houses and all the transport, food, everything. So I don't have to to think about everything on my own anymore. I started first in 2015. We then have only license for regular guides. And when I heard about uh, this project with the Klaipeda University, it was a uh, mm, Transrec uh, European Union project between Poland, Lithuania and Germany uh, for nature guides. So I decided to take part in these courses, so I get certified as a nature guide. And now I'm a member of the South Baltic Nature Guide Network. And uh, Vita also qualified recently, didn't she? Yeah, she was taking part in these courses together with me because it was a pilot uh, project just to see how it's going and see if there is interest so they have uh, something like three groups already on a waiting list. So we were very lucky that it should be from this region uh, around the Baltic Sea. And we get uh, qualified for these courses. So now we are both qualified nature guides. So uh, those uh, things that we offer, our favorite, of course, is individual tours that uh, we don't like big groups because I, I like to to have this uh, personal approach to each of our guests. And if you have, for example, a bus of more than 12 people, it's becoming very complicated. And then I need uh, Vita's support because uh, then we split the group in two, if it's a bigger group. And uh, we always uh, try to figure out in advance uh, what are our guests' target species. So we can uh, arrange the route so we can see all their target species as, or most of them as possible. With me it's always lazy birding. <laughs> we, we don't do big hike or something like that. We just visit the best places. And uh, even if it's sometimes uh, like hardcore birding, tours with me because I want to share all the birds possible and usually people choosing one or two days uh, to, to see everything then I become very anxious to, to show them everything that we have and I sometimes <laughs> getting really disappointed if we cannot find some of the target species but uh, this is happening very rarely and and during now the pandemic, because we couldn't get any foreign uh, tourists, we were blessed that uh, in Lithuania, during the pandemic, the bird watching starts to be very trendy and uh, people start uh, arranging bird feeders in their garden. And because uh, we have this area that it's anyway very popular to tourists, they were looking for something new, unexperienced. So this bird watching and nature tours that we are doing are like <laughs> very popular. And um, we not only try to show them as much species as possible, I have this uh, very good approach to children. So yeah, we just uh, <laughs> infect them with... <laughs> 
with the bird flu that uh, they become very interested and we get feedback from, from the people that when they come back after our tours, they buy in binoculars, uh, bird guides and they starting seeing the birds in their surroundings. So it's really heart touching experience that uh, people are become passionate about the same thing and that we are involved in this. <laughs> We have some uh, events during the year that I always invite friends and people that we get friendly during uh, my tours to take part. Like uh, we have in autumn, always we organize taking part of a bird watch race, okay. like bird rally, yeah. and we always have team. Uh, when we finally <laughs> uh, get this dream team. My friend Povilas, my girlfriend Vita and I, and we won it. It was two years ago with 113 species in 12 hours. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, because I always try to take in my team somebody that is new to the race. And of course, uh, I want to teach them so they can try next year to have their own team. So I'm always like a teacher, but we're only running these uh, nature tours for now. You mentioned a, a corncrake story yesterday. Could you tell us about that, please? The story about uh, corncrake, it's that uh, in some languages, like German, it's uh, called Wachtelkönig, which uh, translated to English means uh, kings of the quails. And I have this uh, guest from Germany that he was very passionate about uh, birding, but uh, if he don't take photo of the bird, he didn't count that he saw it at all. So I have to work hard because it was uh, not really the, the best time to see the corn crake. And it was uh, something like beginning, second part of August. And I was very happy that we have this corn crake uh, running through the road and then suddenly after the corn crake crossed the road it was a small quail running after it and then uh, it was like uh, thunder from clear sky oh this is why they call them kings of the quails <laughs> so they were just following along behind oh wow that's amazing well, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon, Boris. It's been really lovely to meet you. Uh, we've spoken before, but you know, to actually meet in person has been absolutely wonderful. Um, I wish you all the best with your, um, with your company and with your time here at Bird Fair. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll come over and see you in Lithuania. It certainly sounds an absolutely amazing location for birding. Yes, uh, it was really an honour to, to be guest of your podcast. <laughs> and uh, I really hope that... Uh, we're going to meet uh, one day in Lithuania. And it will be a pleasure for me to, to be your guide and show you the best birds we can offer. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. You can find out more about the tours that Boris runs at alcedowildlife.com. And do follow Boris on Instagram at Boris Belchev Nature Photos to see some of his wonderful bird images. I've just returned from a long weekend in Lymington, Hampshire, on the south coast of England. The purpose of the trip was to increase my knowledge of the shorebirds found in my home county and to get lots of practice identifying them. I'll be speaking more about this trip and the birds found there in my next episode. While in Lymington, I spoke with various birders and photographers who either gave me great birding tips or just stopped to chat about the beautiful birds we were seeing. I'll give them a proper shout out in the next episode. But for now, I'd like to thank John, Susie, Ian, Fran and Mark, Maria and Ian, Alison, Russ, Sarah and Evan and Dale for taking the time to chat and for bearing with me while I spoke about my podcast. This episode is brought to you by Casual Birder Weekly, the show's newsletter. I connect with you in lots of places, the show's Facebook group, Instagram and Twitter but because of the hectic pace of social media, it's not easy to make sure that everyone has seen the latest news. Casual Bird Weekly is a great way for us all to stay in touch. Each week, I share exclusive updates and videos about the birds I've seen, 
tips to help you get the best birding experiences, and I'll let you know about any planned group birdwatch events. Sign up now. The link is in the episode notes. A reminder that the Global Bird Weekend is going to be on the 7th to 9th of October 2022. Incorporating the October Big Day, it's an opportunity to go birding, celebrate birds and raise awareness about the stresses and challenges that they face. As in previous events, I'll be leading a virtual team of birders from around the world and I want you to join us. And in case you're wondering, we welcome birders of all experience levels to the team. During the Global Bird Weekend, we'll each go birding in our own locations and share the checklist with the team account, and that creates a trip report that will show the species logged by the whole team. In the weeks leading up to the event, there'll be some exclusive online sessions for the members of the Casual Birder podcast team. To sign up, visit the link in the episode notes. Do keep in touch. Tell me about your sightings by leaving me a voice or written message on the contact form on my website, casualbirder.com. And sign up for my newsletter, Casual Birder Weekly. Take a look at the episode notes for the links to all of these. My thanks to Randy Braun for designing the artwork for the show. The theme music is Short Sleeve Shirt by The Drones. Thanks to them for letting me use it. Check out their website at dronesmusic.net. Thank you all for listening, and I hope you'll join me again for another episode of the Casual Birder podcast.